Hello and welcome to Automate That, the Active Campaign Automation Recipe Show. First ever episode. Uh, very, very, very happy to be here. Happy to be here with all of you. My name is Ernie. Hi, I'm Cody. And uh, we are your hosts here. And uh, welcome to the show. This is the, uh, the first ever episode. As we mentioned, we're going to be going through a common problem that businesses face and then showing you how to automate that problem using active campaign automation. Quickly to get into it here, just before we uh, tackle the issue, Cody, could you uh, just give us a, a brief overview of what a, an automation recipe is and, and what the marketplace is? For sure. So an automation recipe is our term for a pre-built automation template. We have uh, over 500 available in our marketplace that you can plug into your account today and go. And the marketplace is a part of our site where we, you know, it's our library of recipes, uh, free for all users, the ones we've created. Uh, and so get in, feel free to download them and use them to automate your business. Perfect. So let's not waste any more time here. What, uh, what's the issue here that we're, we're covering in uh, the first ever episode? Yeah, Ernie. So the issue today uh, is a contact has submitted a request for gated content. You want to provide that promised piece of content while also starting a conversation and beginning their sales journey. So a lot of different things are firing off all at once. And we're going to show you how to automate that all in one simple, amazing automation. Right. So, you, you know, as a business, you might have uh, gated content behind a form or maybe a, you know, a, a form to sign up to attend an event or for a consultation call. Any sort of, you know, gated thing, gated offering that you have, uh, you're going to want to be able to deliver that thing, whatever it is that they're redeeming and, and converting on your site. And then you also want to take their information and make sure that you store it and store it in a place where you know where it is, that it's in the right place, and then maybe even notify, uh, maybe it's you, maybe it's a member of your sales team, whoever that person is on your end that wants to know that, uh, that information that a contact has submitted. And, and we wanna do that all automatically, right? Because manually converting the, the data from you know, the form submission to wherever it's gonna go, then notifying the person, sending the email, that takes time and things might fall through the cracks. So uh, we're gonna show you how to automate that. Yeah, so at the end of this, you'll know how to kick off a complete journey using Active Campaign and start providing an amazing customer experience from the very beginning of that contact's journey. All right, so we're not gonna waste any more time here. We're gonna get into it with a little segment that we call the Active Campaign Automation Recipe of the Week. Uh, we do have a bit of a a little segment segue here for you. So we're going to roll the. Are you ready? Let's go to the active campaign recipe of the week. Another active campaign recipe of the week. So grab your accounts and your strongest case in the town. back uh shout out there the, that jingle was uh completely performed by musicians from active campaign just a little side note but without further ado it is time to reveal the recipe here we can see the the cloche as uh, i've been informed that this device is called cody what is this week's recipe this week's recipe ernie if yep there we go is going to be the content delivery and deal creation recipe um we have this little picture on the right as you can see uh, it's a uh, smaller recipe that's super powerful. Um, when someone submits that form, we're going to then send them that email with that promised piece of content. And then we're going to do some things on the back end to start creating that journey for them, both creating a deal, notifying the deal owner. A couple of other actions we'll go over too in just a second. Yeah, perfect. So as you can see here on the left, uh, you know, this recipe is applicable to any industry. You know, anyone who's got a form where someone comes on whether it's a landing page or you know, you're just delivering that form via uh, email or something else, if someone is gonna convert on that form and redeem you know, whatever the thing is on the other side of that, 
this recipe could work for you, right? We're going to take that information. We're going to store it in active campaign. We're going to use that information to create a deal and add it to your CRM so that you know exactly when um, and who has submitted that form and redeemed that piece of content. We're also going to make sure that they get that piece of content and then uh, notify somebody on your end, whether it's you, a member of your sales team or, or anyone else, whoever makes the most sense. But let's, uh, let's dive in here. Yeah and take a little bit further look at what this recipe allows you yeah, to do. Yeah, and I just want to real quick point out, I'm seeing in the chat that the uh, slides are a bit fuzzy for some people. We're definitely going to work on that. But we wanted to also mention we will be sending these slides out after for you to also have this information available. Correct, Dirty? Uh, yes, that is absolutely accurate. And you can actually navigate to the handouts tab in the top right of your screen above the chat right now and uh, redeem and <laughs> download those slides. Uh, so they should definitely not be blurry there. But again, we will we'll take a look and uh, see if we can improve that moving forward. So apologies if they are blurry a little yeah, bit. Yeah, no problem. And now, Ernie, uh, let me get back to that question you asked me. So sorry, I just want to take a quick break. Um, so this recipe is going to let you do three amazing things. The very first one, you're going to build engagement early by promptly delivering the requested resource. So, you know, it's not going to be one of those things where it's like, oh, I have a queue of people that I need to send this uh, gated content to or like, hey, everybody sign up, we'll send it out by this date. The second they sign up, they're gonna get that email from you that says, hey, thank you so much, you know, uh, whatever copy you put in that. And then like, here is that piece of content. So early on, you've demonstrated when we send you an email, it's something you're wanting, which is great. And then the second thing that it's gonna do, it notifies your salesperson, as we said earlier, maybe that's you, maybe you are a solopreneur, maybe you have a fully built out sales team, but it lets them know on that deal record what the customer cares about, which is a great way to get into that conversation. That way you're not starting from square one. You know the angle that someone is bringing to this that they're interested in. And then of course, last but not least, we're gonna send the contact into targeted marketing follow-ups in your own proven CRM automation. This is something we encourage, either the actions themselves, such as a deal being created, can trigger other automations, or if you wanna go in and you're very, you know exactly what the next steps are, you can go in and build uh, enter other automation actions in there and just have it at the end that it fires off the automations that you want to follow up. Yeah, perfect. Perfectly summed up. I mean, one thing that I wanted to call out here is just that, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a handoff from um, a piece of gated content to your sales team. Uh, that marketing to sales handoff is definitely a tricky moment and this recipe will absolutely help you take care of that, especially if you know, you've got lead magnets out there or gated content that you're promoting uh, as lead generation tactics. But you could also think about this from a, a variety of standpoints, right? If someone has uh, a, a support question and you have a support form and they fill out that form, you could use this recipe to deliver a confirmation that you know you had received their support request and then notify the appropriate person on your end. So you know while this is uh, one of the, the use cases that we might think of as a, a marketing to sales handoff, it certainly can be used for that, but you can kind of think outside the box here and use this for a, a variety of different um, touch points. Is That's that right, Cody? correct, Ernie. That's a great call out. Yes, uh, once you get, something I want to mention too, once you've imported an automation recipe into your account, it is yours to customize however much. You might look at this and say, you know, the frame's good, but I'm going to need to customize it to meet my needs. And once it's in your account, it is yours. You can customize it to your heart's content. And we definitely encourage that too, because no one's going to know your business better than you. We just want to help you get started on the right foot. Yeah, absolutely. So moving forward here, um, you know, this this recipe that we're that we're outlining does a lot. It accomplishes a lot, but it actually does it with a surprisingly few amount of ingredients. So uh, what is going to make this recipe work? Yeah, so like we said, um, just a couple of steps that are going to do some really amazing things. That form submission trigger is going to get them in to your account and uh, they're not in your account, my apologies, into the automation. And then, you know, that send email, again, starting that conversation, sending that gated piece of content, create a deal, entering them into your pipeline, the notification, sending to a third person's email. You know, we encourage the deal owner, but maybe it's someone else that gives that information outside of the platform. So it's there at your fingertips at any time. And then creating a task. We also are gonna create a task with a time limit that says, hey, we really don't want this to fall through. We should reach out to them within a day, two days, you know, something like that. Um, so yeah, a lot of different processes all firing from these actions. Awesome. Now, this is a slide that I like to refer to as the uh, the mise en place section, if you will. You know, the, this is the, the 
the pre-measuring or getting all of your ingredients out and ready to go if you were to cook something, uh, you know, that way you're not scurrying trying to find the, the right spice when the steak is burning on the grill um, and you have everything kind of at the ready. So in terms of this automation recipe, Cody, what, uh, what do we want to have set up before? Uh, yeah, so um, what we want to have set up beforehand, you want to build the form out ahead of time so you can just select it. You don't need to have it live. We totally understand that like, you don't necessarily want to form live on your site, promising gated content, content before you have it built out. But you want to have it built out so you can just select it. You obviously also need to build out your pipeline and ensure it is set up with the stages you want. And again, when we talk about deals, I saw this question in the chat. We're referring to Active Campaign Deal CRM, which uh, changes a uh, it creates a deal record on a contact that then is about just that specific deal for uh, a sales agent or you you wearing your sales hat to use. Um, and then last but not least, if you're using a unique task, you know, Active Campaign has a great suite of default tasks, you know, things that everyone uses, call, email, check status. But, you know, like we say, every business is unique. If you know there's a unique task you want to build, go into your settings on your Active Campaign account and you can actually create new tasks in there. Um, I also want to call out real quick before we move on. I'm seeing a lot of amazing questions and we definitely want to get to all of them. If we don't get to them right now, we're actually talking about the recipe. We have a dedicated Q&A section at the end of this webinar where we'll make sure that we can actually uh, address them all. So if we don't mention them now, make sure to uh, mention them at that point too and we'll address them. Thank you so much. Yeah, perfect. I just one more point here on this slide. Um, this is really just to ensure that when you do import this recipe and you do set it up that everything has a place to, to go. Um, so this recipe is going to ask for that form. You know, you got to have the form set up so that whoever submits it can start the recipe. Um, having that pipeline set up is going to allow the deal to have a place to go, a place to land for whether it's, you know, again, you, your sales team or whoever that deal owner is, um, you're going to want to send it somewhere that they have access to. And then if you uh, want a custom task, you got to make sure that you have that built out so the platform knows what to populate the yeah, deal with. Actually, that's a great call out. When you import this, it's going to ask you to make certain selections, which we want to call out ahead of time, especially if you're new to our automation recipes. It's going to say, what form do you want to use? And there are notes there that can help you out, but that's why we encourage building those elements ahead of time so that when you're asked to choose things, you don't have to choose a placeholder, go back and change it. You can choose the real one right then. But as Perfect. I see here, it's time to actually dive through and talk about the journey of the recipe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take us through the uh, the first of half course. here. So we've broken it up into two screenshots, so hopefully it's nice and big and everyone can see it. First of all, is like we've said, a contact, when they submit that form, they're going to enter the automation. If you're A-B testing different forms that have the same gated content, absolutely fine. Just build out another form trigger with that other form. You know, Like we say, customize to your heart's content. The next action it's send email action. This is an email going to the content, uh, contact, pardon me, uh, which is going to deliver that gated content to them, you know, the thing they've asked for. Next, it's gonna create a deal. You'll be able to set the value, set who owns it, the, pi uh, the pipeline you want it to go into, and the stage. And, and for this first email here that delivers the content or, you know, whatever the offering is that your contact is redeeming, um, there are a variety of ways that you can do that. You know, that content might live on a link somewhere that is sort of um, hidden and you can send that link to them. Uh, you could also use the uh, the Dropbox integration mm -hmm. if it's an actual PDF or, or a file that you would want to attach to that email. So there's a variety of different ways that you can accomplish this task uh, with that that first content delivery email um, and that's really going to depend on you know whatever it is the offering is that you <laughs> that you're putting behind that's that a form. great call out Ernie thank you yeah no problem moving on to uh, the second part of this recipe bring yeah, us on, so Cody. we're gonna wait for a real quick five minutes uh, I did see a question about why why do we have the five minute wait and that's since we just created the deal record um, this might be your first contact your first touch with the contact they may have just submitted that just makes sure that all the automated processes of filling out those fields and everything happens uh, before it moves on to the next rest of the stages. We want to make sure all of that information is where it needs to go. And then the next action is going to be that notify, uh, as we have here, you know, the personalization tag for a deal owner email, which I'll get to in a second too, but a notification action is a uh, email that is sent to a third party. It can be you, it can be a team, it can be an outside vendor, but it's not an email that goes directly to the contact. That is the biggest difference between a send email and a notification action. So we have a notify about the new deal uh, step, basically. An email goes out to that deal owner email 
Uh, and then it says, hey, we have, a new, uh, we have a new contact with a deal. Here's their name. You can use personalization tags, which are our ways of grabbing information on a deal record or a contact record and just pre-filling it into emails to really give that personalization the next level, including letting your team know. You can put all the information you know they need about that contact in that email. So then if they don't have the uh, platform in front of them at the time, if they're looking at the email on their phone or something, they still have that if the conversation happens at any time in their fingers. And then of course, our proactive task, we set, that, we set the task, we create that task action. So for this example, we're like, hey, here's a call. Um, you need to do the call within the next day. We wanna make sure we're striking when the iron's hot. And here's also what they downloaded. So here's a great way to start that conversation. That actually is the last action in this automation recipe. But as we mentioned, as I wanna call out, if you know those next automations that you're gonna send them through, this is a great place after that task action to then put those inter other, other automation steps. One thing I, I really love about this automation is, is that it is a very limited segment of the customer journey, right? And, and we at Active Campaign, we advocate for a modular approach, right? Break down your, your big automations into bite-sized pieces and then use those as specific automations. Like Cody just mentioned, you can send contacts who finish the automation to another automation as soon as they get through it. But this way, when you use a, a smaller automation, if something breaks down, you know exactly where it breaks down. It's much easier to locate, identify, and then fix that issue. Um, and another thing that I really love about this automation is that it combines automation with a personal touch. Um, so, you know, just because you can automate everything doesn't mean that people want you to automate everything, right? The customer experience is, is very based in human-to-human uh, -human interactions. Uh, people really value those. And so having that quick notification, one, you're, you're delivering that piece of content right away so that, you know, anyone who's submitted a form and then gone and sat and waited in their email inbox knows that it can be frustrating if that thing that you just signed up for doesn't get delivered right away. So first, we're going to take care of that. But then we're going to combine that with the human touch. And that's what's super important in terms of, you know, your sales process or even your support process. People want to know that there's a human on the other end here. And this, and this automation is going to notify the person who is, you know, tasked with the responsibility of following up with that human connection. Uh, so just really balancing that human touch with automation is going to be a great recipe for success. <laughs> exactly. And Ernie, real quick, uh, someone did ask if there would be a recording available after. I believe you know the answer to that, correct, sir? I do. Yes, there will. Uh, great, great question. Um, yes, all of our episodes here for Automate That will be recorded. You will receive them via email. Um, and then there will also be a blog recap that we uh, put out uh, a few days later that will also have the episode. So definitely a, a few different ways for you to, to rewatch. Great. And then uh, this is a section where we want to highlight related recipes. Um, the, first, uh, the first two we have are kind of two different takes on how to move them through a pipeline. And the last one's going to be a marketing one. So to kick us off, the first one is move deal to the next stage uh, when the task is completed. So you can actually, if you know that like, oh, we're doing an introductory call and then they move on to our main stage and I have automations that fire off of that stage. Once you've had the introductory call, this can automatically move them to the next stage and all those automations will kick off. So your deal owner doesn't even have to go in and adjust the deal record or anything. Again, just automating something. The second one, nice. yeah. Uh, <laughs> the second one, assign a recurring task, is uh, if you know that you want to talk to them and it's more of a manual moving to the next stage, you do it when you know they're ready. This just is a great automation once a deal has been created that every week or every specified time you choose, another task to reach out is just automatically created. So that way you don't have to think about it. If you accidentally forget to set up the next call, um, then this will automatically always create those tasks for you to keep the conversation rolling. And then last but not least, we have a uh, seven day drip series, um, which is going to, uh, it's, you know, essentially every day we're sending out a new email, you know, kind of your bread and butter of marketing. We think this is a great way. Once you know what they're interested in, once you know, like, oh, they did my gated content on the best bike trails in America. Okay, well, they, they're a bike enthusiast. Let's, what are those next questions? This is a great way to start automatically talking about the things you know come to a customer's mind next. So that way you're always not even just having the conversation, furthering the conversation and showing that you are a thought leader in your area. Absolutely. And, and again, these three recipes, again, combine human touch with automation. We're going to have that 
that automated sales process where those tasks are populated and, and they're keeping you honest. You're, they're keeping you diligent in your sales process to continue reaching out to those people until you connect with them and you know move them along in their next stage of the customer journey. It's also going to help you not lose track of any leads, right? One of the, the most frustrating things um, when you're managing a lot of contacts is just the fact that some of them fall through the cracks. And uh, these automations are really gonna help keep everything organized, keep everything moving along. Um, Hi, thank you for watching. If you are enjoying Growth Decoded, you can find a link in the description to sign up and join the Grow team. You'll get exclusive content and opportunities that have to do with the show. You can also hit the subscribe button for Active Campaign's YouTube channel somewhere down here, and you will never miss an update from us.